and welcome to our community. Susie Thomas here with you this morning, welcoming our dear friend, Lisa Troyer. Good morning. Good morning, Susie. Thanks for letting me come and visit with you and your friends today. Well, always. You're always welcome here. You are, among so many things, a prominent businesswoman in town. Well, I am kind of tall, so I would be (laughs) prominent. Yeah. But I think some people might be surprised to find out all the different things that you do. We think of you as Circle of Friends Ministries, and we think of you with your recording and and, uh, certainly um, here on the light, but also the family behind Heine's Cheese, Mm -hmm. and now you with your sister with Swisters. And uh, I think it's just so interesting to be able to spend some time with people who do the business in town and who uh, are so um, really involved with the economic impact of our area and our community, and yet how you also work in ministry and work in giving back and work in teaching that next generation what's really important. And that's kind of taken on a theme of this whole week, which is such a God thing. Mm-hmm want to talk to you, first of all, about maybe where you got this. Let's talk about your parents and Heine's cheese. Mm-hmm. And even I believe you said that your father was pretty instrumental in the whole idea of tourism yep. and Amish country. Talk about that mm-hmm. a little bit. Well, back in the late 60s, my dad, you know, we had a little cheese factory in Bunker Hill, which was actually a co-op. And dad, because he... He was born in Switzerland, grew up on a little farm, and and then, you know, my grandfather, he and my great uncle had been cheesemakers in the 20s, the people that actually owned the business that we now own. They sponsored them to come over and make cheese for them because, you know, it's like they were getting older and and, uh, they needed some young, experienced Mm cheesemakers to kind of, you know, take up the slack. Well, Grandpa, he always wanted to live in the United States, but my grandmother was, you know, single back in Switzerland and she said hey Hans we're either going to do this or I'm moving on Mm -hmm. well I'm paraphrasing but (laughs) if anyone knew my grandma Lily they'd say yeah that sounds like her and so he went back to Switzerland in the 30s and my dad was born in 1935 and it was that year that my great uncle Chris he actually purchased the cheese factory which is now Heine's. The corporation name is Bunker Hill because it's in Little Bunker Hill Village Mm -hmm. just a mile north of Berlin and by the way Heine's is the nickname for Heinrich That's where that came from. People wonder. People wonder. And I know it's one of those things that mom and dad were going to call it Heidi's. But then uh, Mrs. Grossnicklaus that owned the Heidi's restaurant part, she wasn't real good with that. But my dad, because he kind of, he's an innovator. So he went and had thousands of Heidi labels printed. Yes. And he was flipping out because he had thousands of Heidi labels printed. My Swiss grandmother, Lily, though, she was like, well, we can fix that. And with a black Sharpie marker, she said, if we change the D to an N, it's just like Heinrich. And that's how the name came to be. Entrepreneurial, problem solving. And it's like, we're not going to say quit just because of, of one thing. A woman? With a Sharpie. Yes. Ended up naming yep. this now internationally yep. known cheese company yep. that was supposed to originally been Heidi's. Mm-hmm. What a what a fun inside mm-hmm. story there. Yeah. So, I mean, it's and that's kind of just the way we've always operated. It's mm-hmm. like, let's not be afraid to try something new with the tourism thing. You know, Dad, he was like the first person that we're aware of in North America that put like peppers and stuff like that in cheese. And everybody was like, Pete, his name's Peter Dowalder. Mm -hmm. He's like, you're crazy. You're going to go out of business. You're giving away all these samples. You're doing all this, all these weird things. It's like you're going to run you're going to run yourself out of business and give the cheese industry a bad reputation here in, you know, in Holmes County. And he was like, well, okay, well, I prefer to not agree with what you're saying. <laughs> so he and uh, one of the other gentlemen that had like an Amish restaurant in Walnut Creek, they actually went to like uh, Lakefront Tour Bus Company and in and, and Cleveland and they went to Pittsburgh, they went to Columbus and said, hey, you guys really need to bring some tours to Amish country. And that was, you know, like 45 years ago. And on those first bus tours, they were coming to... Archie's factory and to like the Der Dutchman restaurant in Walnut Creek. And I'm thinking that's all that there would have been at that pretty, time. We didn't have much. streets and there streets. Was, of well, there fun was the things. Berlin House restaurant, some mm-hmm. of the folks. But basically, that's how 
tourism started in Holmes well, County. People must have enjoyed it because they well, continued to around, come back. Yeah, well, all those free cheese samples, they got to see cheese being made because it's like our factory and Gooseberg's factory are actually the only cheese factories in Berlin Township. So you were getting to watch it be made, but mm-hmm. I, you are taking us right back to what we learned on Monday with John Rulin's book, Giftology. Yes. That giving and relationship building will bless your business. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's like, I always feel like, whether it's a whether it's a song or food that you make or or an idea of creativity i mean it's like if you're not willing to give it away then you must not really believe in it because if you believe that it's something that god has put in your hand and you're willing to share it you know it's like casting your bread on the water or casting your cheese on the water mm-hmm. or, or <laughs> casting your song on the radio or whatever it is mm-hmm. you know i think sometimes especially uh in media because the last 50 years, there's been such incredible wealth amassed through the media, like record industry and and uh, publishing and stuff like that, that it's the only reason that you would create something is to make money on it. Then you're not really creating out of a, uh, the creation gift that you have. It's, you know, it's like the motive is yes. skewed. Not that it's bad to make a living from it. I don't mean that at all. But, but it's what fun to create. You? I mean, God, I mean, in the beginning, God created. Yes. I mean, so let's create some fun things, some some uh, great food and some fun activities that will be a good catalyst for fellowship. And then, you know, doing something good for somebody else that doesn't, that doesn't usually you know, have a negative uh, result when you step out of your comfort zone to do something different. And I think when you're talking about the food industry and you're talking about something like cheese and bread and cheese and baking, Mm -hmm. breaking bread together Mm -hmm. and fellowship occurs around cheese and crackers, doesn't it? Uh, There's a lot of fellowship that takes place there. Mm -hmm. Um, Touch on that, that, how your industry really is so integral to friendship and I don't know a party where you'd go to there's not a cheese platter there well that's true and remember too that in the early church I mean we didn't have you know large buildings like we do now but people met in people's homes Mm -hmm. and most of the time you know from what I've read is you know before they would get the meal started they would you know, break bread, they'd have the Lord's Supper, they'd eat together. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's something essential about, you know, meeting around a table where we're not only being emotionally nourished and spiritually nourished, but then there's that physical nourishment, too. Did your father and mother ever really um, gather the kids around and say, okay, here's the family business? Or was this something that you saw and thought, well, what a neat thing to be a part of? Uh, yes, and yes, mm-hmm. and yes. Well, it w- I mean, when I lived in Nashville, um, and I worked in the music industry, and, and that, I mean, even during that time period, I really did understand how a good quality food product can really give you influence. <laughs> because I mean, I would have songwriters on music Row said hey did your mom and dad send you any cheese <laughs> <laughs> i've never had i can't buy cheese like that at kroger yeah you know, and this was you know back in the you know 80s where, uh, it's comfort you know, food yeah uh and i mean there's something there's just something good about eating tasty wholesome clean 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 and see that's the thing you know we've always we've always uh been a clean the taste of clean. I remember yeah, the you taste saying. of clean. Yeah, and it's like you know, there's not growth hormones in the milk. I mean, we're we're dealing with the the local Amish farmers where we can go out and say, you know, hey Jonas or Eli or whatever their name is, we can walk on their farm. We can we know who they are. This is not some kind of um, you know big huge industrialized impersonal kind of thing. I mean. The milk that comes into our plant, you know, it's like, I mean, I, if I would drive an hour in any direction, I'd be able to say, okay, this is where my farmers are. You know the exact cows where mm. the milk came from mm. for your Yeah, cheese. I don't know all the names of the girls, but <laughs> hey, you know. 
pretty amazing. Um, all right, we're speaking with Lisa Troyer um, from Heine's Cheese and now Swisters. So mm -hmm. what caused the sisters to get together and put together Swisters? Well, of course, our dad's born in Switzerland. There you go. And Leanne and I are sisters, so it's just... Very cute name. Actually, that name originated with... Uh, and I call him a kid. He's not really a kid. He's, you know, in his early 30s now. His name's Heath Fouts. He's from Tuscross County. He's worked for a company for, well, almost 10 years. And when we were talking about doing something, we were going to say sisters. This, and then, and he said, well, why not say Swisters? You guys are Swiss. And it was like, hey, that's kind of groovy. And it's like, Leanne and I, we like to perpetuate an environment where, we can give our folks the freedom to be creative. Mm -hmm. You know, it's kind of like there are no dumb questions. Mm -hmm. There are no dumb answers. And it's like that came out of sitting together with a, a, a group of multi-generational people. I mean, I had at the table a friend of mine from New York named Michael who actually discovered Rachel Ray when he was the specialty food buyer at the Macy's department store in Manhattan in their gourmet section. Wow. He gave her her first job in the food industry. And then here's Heath from, you know, New Philly, you know, and we're sitting together at this table. But that says a lot about your management style that a person feels comfortable to throw out a what about this. Mm -hmm. um, some environments are more stifling mm -hmm. where that creativity is not encouraged. Some some who are very, um, very methodical, I think they don't like my leadership style. But, you know, I have to be who God made me to be. I always say that I think when God created me, he was reading a comic book. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, sometimes that's, that's great. And I mean, I know that I know that there are some people that couldn't work for me, because I like to see people empowered to take the next step that they don't know about. And I don't have to know about it either. I mean, if you would have told me five years ago that there would be a store in Sugar Creek that we renamed mm -hmm. Swister's. Gourmet shop, right? Yeah, Heine's mm -hmm. Gourmet Market. And the mm -hmm. reason that we knew that we needed to do something is that everybody was walking in. It's like, well, where are you making the cheese? Mm -hmm. Because the name Heine's, I mean, it is where the cheese is made. It's not just sold there. It's made there. Oh, it's fun and so, to watch. so Leanne and I made the decision that we needed to, you know, rebrand. Mm -hmm. And so thanks to Heath and thanks to Dad being Swiss and Leanne and I being sisters, well, there you go. It was one plus one plus one equals Swisters. <laughs> For people who also manage younger people, mm -hmm. um, what would you say to them as far as being able to create that kind of creative environment? Well, I think that there needs to be an open dialogue. One of the tools that we've used and, uh, you know, that many companies use. Well, Dr. John Maxwell is using it in nations around the world, but it's it's the Global Priority Roundtable. I mean, Dawn Yoder uh, from Digital Dish, uh, she and I, you know, we're, you know, CEO positioned daughters of entrepreneurial fathers. Mm -hmm. And it's like, you know, we've kind of been the the bridge between you know, the the boomer generation and the millennial generation. And it's kind of like, I think because we're both moms, you know, you have to have an open dialogue with your kids, whether you agree with them all the time or not, you still have to have the open dialogue. And what we notice about generationally, we used to kind of reach up to the generation above like, yes, sir, what can I do for you? You know, kind of like we have to prove ourselves. Well, now it's kind of like, we're in the sandwich generation now yes. and and the millennial generation is kind of like i want you to hear my voice because they're forever sharing their voice on social media and stuff like that that's really translated strongly into how they see themselves in the work environment and so if you can learn to navigate that well and of course establishing healthy boundaries and i tell you I'm learning. There are some days where I'm like, are you for real? <laughs> I would have never said that <laughs> to my boss. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. But but then I wouldn't have felt safe enough to share my heart with my boss either. Mm -hmm. And I do find that we have those glimmers that come through too. So, I mean, I'm the first to say that I am 
not the perfect boss. And I'm sure that there are many people that have probably worked for me over the years. You're hearing the echoes of amen throughout (laughs) homes of Tuscarawas County. (laughs) Well, I knew this was going to fly by. We do need to take a break here, but want to get back to some of the things that your millennials are doing Mm -hmm. that you've encouraged them to be very creative. And that's after these words, you're listening to our community.